Have you ever found yourself standing at the crossroads between ambition and doubt, wondering if you have what it takes to truly make your dreams a reality? What if I told you there was a secret to unlocking your full potential and it isn't found in the fleeting whispers of the passion, but in the ironclad grip of a commitment, of making the actual commitment. See, in this world, we're constantly chasing after the next big thing, the next shiny object. It's easier to get lost in all of that noise, to feel just another face, or I should say really to feel like another face in the crowd. Yet, here's the truth. Those who dare to commit, to push through the storms, through the victimhood, through what they said you couldn't be, and still continue to manage through the uncertainty, as well as the weights of the setbacks, and emerge victorious, you want to stay tuned because I got something very hot for you. If you're new to the channel, I go by the name of ED. For all you smart and intelligent folks out there, that just simply means Ed. I have an eight-point framework, and these eight points, my goal, my job is to unpack today's title, which is entitled, Why Commitment Has Nothing to Do With Your Feelings. You see, I had to put a little, little, little stank on there. I said, yo, uh, why commitment has nothing to do with your feelings. If you mind if I share a story with you, family, I, this came about because I was, there's two pieces here. So I'll give you, I'm going to give you both of them. The first piece is, is that I signed up for a mastermind and in the mastermind, one of the first assignments was, Hey, go watch this video. So I click on the link. It takes me to the video. I'm watching the video and I'm a little confused because I already know this uh, YouTuber because I follow a lot of his content, but I didn't see this video before. And so the video talks about uh, the, 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 I should say, the case that the, this YouTuber was making, I'll tell you his name, which was Robert Blake. He was talking about how people um, that you look up to as you, certain YouTubers really wasn't that great at it when they first got started. And he was challenging you, saying, make 100 videos. And I'm think, and I thought about that about how a lot of times we get caught up in the shiny objects. We get caught up in, uh, we put together this massive plan instead of breaking it down in bits and pieces. And then we, when we don't break it down in bits and pieces, and we have this huge uh, plan that we may have taken days, hours, who knows, months, and we don't attack anything on that list that we said that we truly wanted out of life. You start asking yourself why. And then the second piece to that family of this story was I was talking to a good friend and we were talking about the commitment, the things that we wanted to do. Um, as far as for me, I'm talking about project management and personal development and things of that nature. And he's telling me about the things he was working on. And we, were, we, we paused for a minute. It was really it was really weird. At the same time, it was amazing at the same time because I asked a simple question. I said, how far are you along on that plan? And he says, you know what? I've been allowing my, I've been getting in my own way of the things I want to accomplish. And it made me think, I said, man, you know what? Honestly, I've been doing the same thing. There's, yes, there's a lot of outside forces. Yes, there's a lot of people telling me, hey, I should do it this way. Yes, there's people externally telling me all these different stories. Plus, on top of the stories they're telling me, I'm telling myself stories because I'm like, oh, I want to get this done. I want to get that done instead of just saying, I'm going to do this done first. After we complete that task, we'll move on to the next one. So we don't get overwhelmed with the opportunity of being successful or what success looks like to, to us. I love what Napoleon Hill says here. He says, don't wait. The time will never be just right. How many times have we waited? We wait it because we're waiting for the perfect time. We're waiting because we believe if, if we get all our, as they say, our ducks in a row, then it would be a perfect out time, uh, opportunity to uh, write that book or to put out that podcast. I'm here to let you know, family, there is not going to be a perfect time. And so today in these eight points that I know uh, in the month of April, we talked about uh, the ability of the, you know, like I said, I was going to get in some more project management artifacts and some P, uh, PMP and CAPM questions for you guys. That's still coming. You know, I'm still going to deliver on that. But I have to deliver today's message uh, 
for today's episode because it's very important that if it's only one person out there that I reach with this message, I may even be just talking to myself. So maybe I'm allowing you to join in this conversation that I'm having that I've been having with myself throughout today of the reasons why I have to stay committed. I have to I have to eliminate those stories that I am listening to from external people as well as the stories I've all, uh, built all on on my own self. So Let's get to work, family. Point number one, commitment is a decision, not a choice. Mm -hmm. Commitment is a decision, not a choice. See, the reason why I say that, family, is because once you, make, once you make the commitment and you align it with the decision, now it's time to pursue your goal and be independent of all the emotional fluctuations that are going to come along your way. Life is going to happen. That's what life does. However, what are the things you can control and what are the things you can't control? We have to look at that. We need to first say, here's an actionable step. Let's write down our commitment. So what I did with family, I went back to the basics. I'm just going to tell you what I'm doing. Went back to the basics. I pulled out the whiteboard, I already had them up, uh, but I still had uh, last quarter's go uh, goals on there. I said, nope, we, how many of these did we do? We didn't get all the, okay, we need to we need to re we need to remix this or we need to change basically what we have here so we can stay really tunnel vision focused on the projects that I literally have lined up that I, if I sit down and, and invest in it can happen. So define define and also while you're writing down uh, your commitment, define what you're committing to and the reasons behind it, emphasizing the importance of decision over feelings. Family, I also want to ask you while, we, while we're on this topic, please leave in the comments, what is your single biggest challenge uh, you are having in project management? Let's move on to point number two, consistency over mood. Listen, family, right now, um, it's pretty, it's in the evening right now where I'm located at, and I was like, man, you know, I could really just relax. I just got done eating. I was like, I could relax, but I understood that I had to deliver a product to you guys, family. Even though it was free, I'm excited. I feel blessed that I have an opportunity to do this day in and day out. So it's consistency over mood. My mood was, man, I want to relax. So I need to get myself, you know, worked up and get excited about the message today. So commitment requires consistent actions, even when your mood is not aligned with the task at hand. How many times have we allowed the task, our emotions, block our blessings. Oh, I think I like that. Matter of fact, okay, I'll remix that. How many times have we allowed our mood to block us or get in our own way of what we said that we wanted? Nobody said that they wanted this for us. We said that we wanted, you said that you wanted it. So establish a routine, family, a schedule, and check in with yourself as far as how you're doing on a regular progress to see. And don't overdo it. Start small. Say maybe if you say, okay, I'm going to put together a schedule. These are the two days or the one day. Start small, family. Stop, stop looking at the destination. Let's focus on the journey. Point number three, accountability mechanisms. You know, one of, uh, I talked about my console that I have with uh, Phil and Byron and they, they really hold me accountable to the things that I said that I wanted. It's anytime I talk, it was like, so where are we at on this project? Where are we at on that project? And it's just like, ah, you're right. So you need those family because when you share your commitments with a friend or mentor uh, or a accountability partner, they can hold you accountable for checking in on you on your progress. Because a lot of times, again, we allow life to happen and we use an excuse of life happening when there's somebody that is laying in that hospital bed that's got the news that they're not going to leave this hospital. There's somebody that's laying in that hospital that wish that they can get up right now and walk out or walk around or be able to get back their health. And we have that opportunity. You know, there's also somebody that's sitting in that retirement home that, you know, is looking back and saying, man, I wish I would have done. I regret that I didn't do. I don't want that to happen to you, family. I don't want that to happen to me. So that's why I'm sharing you the behind the scenes of literally what the conversation I'm having with myself. Embracing discomfort point number four you know a lot of times the reason why people don't want to make the commitment of doing something that is outside their comfort zone 
because of what comes with the, the, the discomfort. What comes with the discomfort is frustration. What comes with the discomfort is an emotional response to something that you you're not supposed to be top. You're not supposed to be top level. You're just learning the information. And I get it because I, I've been through this many of times where I have to use products, software products, or I have to do a, a try different techniques. And it's like, man, this is uncomfortable. I'd rather do it this way, but it has to be done. And so set small, uncomfortable challenges related to your commitment. This is going to help you because gradually it will increase your ability to stay, be, watch this family. I like, I like this. It will allow you to be, um, comfortable in a discomfortable uh, position. Mm, you don't like that? Okay, let me see if I can remix that. It would allow you to st go after your goals, go after that vision that's inside of you while you're being uncomfortable, but at the same time, you're comfortable because you know where you're going. All right, point number five, adaptability without loss of focus. This is something I had to do. I talked about it briefly. I had to understand that, hey, this plan that I was using is not working. It just was not working. It, it, and it's not the plan's fault, it's me. You know, people will say, hey, you need to get up at this time in the morning or that time in the day, or you need to do this. And But if it doesn't work for me and it's not, it's not working for me, then I need, to, I need to figure out what works for me. That is a general respo uh, response because that's what worked for somebody else. So what I say to you, family, is, is that Learn how to be adaptable with your plan. I mean, especially for my project coordinators, project managers, program managers, you, you should already know if we have to be adaptable, we make that change um, and we make that change and document why it didn't work. Why did we need to make the change? Why wouldn't you do that same thing for your own life? Point number six, I say beyond, beyond passion. Listen, it's, it's always funny to me where I was out one day and gentleman said, Hey, what do you do? I said, Oh, I'm a project manager. Oh man, I would love to do that. Hey, I was like, Hey man, I coach and mentor people that are wanting to get in this thing that I love that I hope you will love or fall in love with called project management. Here's my number. Give me a call. Ask me if I got a call back from that gentleman. No, I did because what happens is it sounds good at the time. You start already creating the dream. Now, all we need is the background uh, music to come in with the, with the instruments and everything. But what tends up happening once you find out what the work is involved and how long it's gonna take, you're not gonna be able to microwave the success. You're not gonna be able to do a two week boot camp and get your PMP like that, or maybe you can, I don't know. But the point I'm trying to make, family, is, is that this is going to take practice. Practice, yes, this is going to take practice for us to move forward. In order to move forward, we're going to have to we're going to have to take that passion and find ways that we can cut that passion up in small pieces. So when we lose passion that day, that we can get that little piece of. Whoop. I don't know why I did that, but it just sounded it was just starting getting good to me. But seriously, family, the point of it is, is that reminding yourself of why you've made that decision. The reason why I made the decision to do YouTube and create these and uh, do a podcast um, and for this episode is because of the fact of, or not just this episode in general, because I felt there were a lot of people out there that didn't know about this thing that I love called project management. And I wanted to share it with the world. And I figured out how could I share it with the world? Only way I could do it is through a social media platform. So this is the reason, this is what I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about disrupting project management at the same time, helping people that want to hone their craft or that are new to this industry and really want to know more and actually build a career here. Point number seven, the power of habit. Listen, family, over time, action taken, um, action taken on your commitment really builds habits. It not only builds habit, it really builds your resilience uh, when you're feeling, you, you're, you're feeling like, man, I don't even want to do this today. Let me just, let me just uh, make up an excuse or find a reason why this can't happen. No, 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 no. What you want to do, family, here's an actionable response. Focus on building one small habit at a time. I actually learned that out of, uh, uh, oh man, I'm thinking of James Clear's book, The Atomic Habit. Um, one, and that's why I say I always try to get 1% better each day. What could I improve on? Point number eight, learning from failures. I think a lot of times, family, when we don't have the success, we we look inside and we start beating ourselves up. It's like, I'm, I couldn't do this. I'll give you a perfect example, family. When I didn't pass the PMP exam, I was beating myself up because I was like, I know I know this content. I know this information. Like I've taught it to other people that helped them pass. So 
Why is it not working for like I'm I'm creating all type of stories and then finally I was like, listen, it's something that I'm not doing right here. So let me go hire a coach and a mentor to help me figure this out. And that's what I did. And so there's something there when you when you when you take the time to look at failure for just what it is, because see, I, I always I believe is a difference failure and failing like, oh, you know, a failure is like, oh, man, I, uh, that was a failure there. But failing to me is like, man, I just decided not to get back up. I'm just going to lay there in the in, in my failing and just say, yep, there's nothing I can do about it versus, you know, I love what Tony Robbins was talking about. It was like if you had to figure it out. Like if, if, because we figured out things before where you was like, when it, it, the pressure was on and you, you was like, dang, I didn't even know that I was able to do that. Yeah. You were able to figure it out. So again, family reflect on your failures or setbacks to extract, watch this, the key lessons, and then address, adjust your approach based on those insights without losing commitment. Here's the bonus family redefining success. You need to understand what success looks like to you, not what you see from anybody else. It's okay to model what you would like to see, but it's up to you to make the decision of what does success look like to you? Is it writing a book? Is it passing a PMP? Is it passing the cap? Whatever success looks like to you, because as you, as you continue to go up each level, success is going to look different on each level for you. So I'll, this is what I always recommend is measure the success by the consistency of your efforts as well as family, your personal growth, rather than just being uh, about the achievement. Just look at your personal growth and see how you grow. Here's my three closing remarks for you, family. First closing remark is adaptability without loss of focus. I really believe this is key because you have to always be prepared to change your plan and plan. And when your plan has to be changed and it has to be adaptable, you still have to maintain that same focus that you had with the original plan. Point number two, commitment is a decision. Listen, family, it's not a, a choice. We already addressed what the difference is, what I learned from Myron Golden about choice and decision. Choices that when you make a decision day, you decide to cut. When you cut, there is nothing behind you that's going to say, well, you know, let me look at this or this. or No, no, no. You've made a, a clear decision. This is what I'm doing. I'm moving forward into something that information that I, unless I obtain some uh, additional information that forces me to change this decision. But when you make a choice, it could be like, oh, well, it's, it's sort of like what somebody is saying. I love what Les Brown talked about. Somebody say, well, um, I'll try and make the meeting. He was like, how are you going to try and make the meeting? I mean, either you're going to be at the meeting or you're not. You don't try and sit down. You either sit down or you don't. So that's some of the things, family, when you make the commit, when you make a, a commitment, and it's a decision behind that commitment, not a choice. That's how you know you're really doing something well. And the last and final point is embracing discomfort. I know a lot of people want to be comfortable. I want to be comfortable. Don't let it fool you. I know when it's cold, when it would be cold in the morning, I was like, man, I do not want to get out of the bed and get on this treadmill or go to the gym. I, this, this bed is too warm. Sometimes the bed won and sometimes I won. But the point I'm making is, is that I understand that the commitment often means stepping out of your comfort zone and looking at a new perspective so you can have the success that you want. So family, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I know you guys want to get into some more uh, PM training, which we will around the pin box six. And then the, I don't know what we're calling the addendum or seven. Uh, I don't know if we're calling it the seven, but we're going to do some more of that. But this was, this was really heavy on my heart today. And I really want to drop this today. So hope you enjoy it until next time. This has been your boy ED and I appreciate you tuning in to me today.